Tell me about the yeah. the new single, Man Overboard. We'll start with that one. What's the uh, What's the story? Is this a, a brand new song? Is this something you'd had sitting there for a while? Man Overboard is actually a song that we had recorded uh, during the Enema of the State sessions, and we were having problems with lyrics at some points. We were having problems with a couple harmonies. We worked on all the other songs and decided, you know, that we were just going to leave that one off and save it for later or whatever. And then when the live record came along, the label said, hey, how about a new studio track, you know, as a bonus for the fans? So we said, well, we got this song we've been working on, let's use that. So we went back in the studio, finished up the vocals, and put it on. So that's the story of how Man Overboard made the Mark Tom and Travis show. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have is there tons of other songs you've got in various states of? Uh... There was one. There's another song on there that uh, what was what was the name of that song? Uh, Life so boring. There's yeah. a song called Life so boring that I also didn't make the cut that I was trying to write lyrics for, and it just. Like, I'd spend an hour in the studio writing lyrics, thinking, I'd go, oh, this is great, this is great. And I'd say it to, uh, like, Tom and our producer or whatever, and they both look at me and go, no, no, uh, That was no. a rad song, though. It's, but, uh, it's, got, it's a cool song. I just couldn't think of any lyrics for it at all, and it was all, it just sounded really contrived when we tried to. It sucks when a song it. you write sounds way better when you don't sing on it at all. <laughs> just, just the music was fine by itself, but once our voices came into it, it was, that's what ruined it. Um, so this is the only new song on the album? This is the period? only, yeah. Man Overboard is the only new song on, on uh, the, new, the live record. Now, there was, I don't remember what article it was, Rolling Stone or something, mentioned something about you wanted to do cover songs, or there was other things. Was that just you guys? We always want to do cover songs, but we never get around to doing it. Travis lives a couple hours away, which really isn't the best excuse because he'll drive 10 hours to play anytime. We're just pretty lazy, Mark and I. But we've been so busy as well. We're always touring, so when we get home, it's like, the first thing and the only thing we really want to do is just have some space and, and hang out with our dogs and our families or whatever. But um, I still but, want to cover that police song though. I know there's always songs that we have all these songs that we want to cover that why, we really like. But why like p who else? B police. I would police. Like, I want to cover that song. It's all any way you want it. That's the way. You need. I think that's a rad song. Yeah, that's a cool song. But that's when we kick them out of the band. Is the problem? Yeah. That's a great song. <laughs> <laughs> who did that song? Journey. Yeah. That's a good song. You know that song? Journey. I, I can't go there. Oh, <laughs> Travis, why not? I don't know. I've never been a Journey fan. It just seems so like... It's like Midwest heavy metal or something. I don't know. I don't like Journey. I don't like... They, they had good songs, though. I'm not I like saying I like songs. Journey. I'm just saying I like that one song. You Travis, liar. You're a closet Journey. Like, <laughs> like a, I got like that big poster up my room with a yeah. flying beetle or whatever it was through space. <laughs> Travis, seriously, what, would you say you're a fan of? the? Uh... I'm a fan of everything. I like Phil Collins. Like, if I was gonna do a cover song, I think he oh, has yeah. songs. Oh like, yeah. Which he, one? Um, like early Phil Collins or anything? Like anything off early Phil Collins. Not like Against Genesis all days. Like not Invisible Touch days, but like before. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, you're against all Invisible Oz, Touch. Stuff like that. Like right. crazy. Didn't expect that of him. Hey, I just want you guys to notice that I got crap for wanting to cover one Journey song, and then Travis busts out with "I like Phil Collins," and nobody even went to him at all. It's because it was Mohawk. <laughs> <laughs> well. I like uh, I like Paul Simon. Dude, seriously? I have to admit that I like Grace Simon when it came out. Sir, well, Grace Simon's an amazing album, but seriously, Tom. Is, like, is it, I don't know his stuff. I like a few radio songs, you know. Like what? Uh, the one where it was... Down the streets, yeah, that one, the Andy Chevy Chase so song. <laughs> Everyone calls it the Chevy Chase song because right. Chevy Chase was in the video. You can call me Al. Yeah, that one. Okay. I like I that one. I bust out the whole song right now. That song would be rad to do, though. Yeah. Do it. Oh, no, uh -uh. no, can you do one verse though? Yeah. Do one verse. No, because it'll end up on TV and radio. No, 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 no. No, it's okay. Next question. Okay, next question. How many shows you record for this live album? Was it a con every night you're recording mm -hmm. the tours after tours, or is this a one night, one place? Well, kind of, it's kind of a mixture of both. We actually recorded the, the music from Los Angeles and San Francisco. And so we con conglomerated the songs, uh, the best performances, you know, from those two nights. And then we took jokes from, from 30 shows, and, and you, the, the, the record, when it ends, just trails off for like how many minutes of just horrible, just Yeah, stupid there's like 15 minutes of uh, stuff the most disgusting song. things we've ever said on stage. This is not the kind of record that you want to buy for like your seven-year-old cousin. Is, is, this, is this the album that people are going to go, I told you they were yeah, this is definitely the album. Well, see, the funny thing is, is like we've been saying these same jokes for ten years now. Now people listen. Now is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've been on stage saying the the most disgusting things for ten years, and you know, people might see the all the small things video and go, "Oh, okay, these guys write cute little love songs or whatever." And then they put in the CD, and it's like, you know, I f your dad, I f your dad, I f 
You're dead. That's so funny. Yeah. You know what's so funny though is that actually that we're doing this interview with you, Mike. Is you remember when you guys first put on M and M's? Right. On 91X. Mm -hmm. That was the first time we actually had people come into our shows that that heard of us from, from a mainstream audience. So I remember, like, so we played Soma down here in San Diego, and it was like, you know, it was our like, first sold out show, and it was because Eminem's was selling records for us. Well, we, we up to that point, we're, we've always done the same thing. We've always been extremely rude and trying. Mark and I just trying to entertain each other on the microphones. So I remember right after we did that show. We started getting letters from all these people just going, you misogynistic, sexist, perverted, just every single word, just because we love boobs and we love nudity and everything. And I was, we sat down, I was trying to tell more, well, it's just because those people heard us on the radio and like we had like this big, but we never stopped. And we always have these, these times where we sit down going, yeah, maybe we should tone it down, but it never gets toned down. It always just keeps going one step further. I saw you guys before I put that record on the radio. I saw you guys because O was like, you got to come see these guys. I think it was Soma. It was it was sold out before we started playing it. it oh, was, it was, I it was, it was I mean, you guys were selling out shows there. It seemed forever, in, in my opinion. And then I walked in. To me, it was like a built-in audience. I knew there were Blink fans at that point anyway. So when we put the single on the radio, it was just kind of like, hey, this is happening right now. Sure, those other people showed up after that, but I think your original fans, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, there were 14-year-old girls on stage no, yeah. Yeah. Before, before I started playing, right? <laughs> they had notes from their parents. And if they were yeah, doing anything you know, wrong, it was totally There's been a couple times that we've done stuff on stage that uh, we've gone back later and said, that probably wasn't such a good idea. You know what we did? I remember, too, after that one show that we got, and it was specifically, it's like one of the first radio-type audience we played in front of, and we started getting these letters and these comments. Because I mean, when you play for punk rock kids, they never go, "Yeah, you're fucked up. You shouldn't say those things." So like, it was never an issue. But then you play for these mainstream kids, and, and a lot of them got really offended at the things we said. And Mark and I we were like, "Why are they mad at us? Gutter mouth sticks, drumsticks in their ass." You know? Yeah, totally. <laughs> we're talking about looking at a girl's boobs or something, and then gutter mouth is walking around with a drumstick hanging out of the singer's butt. <laughs> we felt like heroes. <laughs> right, the thing. You kind of answered in a way, but. What's changed, Bef you know, pre getting played on the radio, now obviously MTV was like a, a big hurdle for you. What's changed between then, obviously Travis is, is new quote unquote since the, the early days, but what's changed? What, do you do things differently at all? I mean, when you walk on stage, do you consciously go, or, yeah. you, or are, you trying to do, are you trying to outdo what you did before? We always just do the same, I mean, we've, that we, Tom and I are always trying to outdo each other on stage, and I think that, uh, our stage show has not changed at all just because we've always said stuff like that. I mean, maybe things have gotten incrementally worse as we've gone on because the things that offended people five years ago don't, like, even affect me now. I mean, we used to think, it was, actually, I think it has, when we, when we first started playing, we get up on stage and start talking about masturbation, and oh my god, we thought we were, like, so racy, and now we go up on stage and start <laughs> talking about Satan f***ing little girls and I mean, <laughs> little so dudes, good. and I mean, it's gnarly now, I mean, it, it gets bad. And we just, I mean, even from the beginning of a tour to the end of the tour, like, you can see, like when we're listening back to the, the, the tapes from the, all the shows on the Mark, Tom, and Travis show tour, I and mean, we started off talking about one thing, and then as every night goes by, Tom and I will try and outdo each other on stage with the most outrageous thing you can possibly say. And uh, by the end of the tour, wow. I mean, it, it, I feel sorry for the people that live like in the southeast because that's where we normally end our tours. So people in like Houston and <laughs> like Louisiana and stuff. Warped. Yeah. It's not good. But not much has changed. The stage shows, like Mark said, are the same. And I mean, the biggest thing that's changed for us personally is just, you know, obviously we're living more comfortable than we were, uh, you know, five, six, seven, eight years ago when we're sleeping on people's floors. All three of us, you know, have a place to live and we're able to uh, afford the lives of two beautiful dogs each. Actually, you have three, don't you? Travis has three, but, you know. What about for you, Travis? Did you see him before? before you joined the band and, and watched, has it gotten worse for you? I mean, rumor has it you just sit behind the drums and try not to pay attention to all of them. <laughs> Is that? No, I'm just kind of like, when I'm up on stage, I'm kind of like in the, in like the mode to just play and play as perfect and you know, the best I can. I just, I, I'm like the freak that doesn't want like some idiot videotaping me while I'm playing and I'm playing like that night and then I'm like, oh that's everywhere. So I just try to, I'm really into playing the drums and kind of like being like a nerdy musician, like, you know, being on every night, you know? So it's kind of like, it's a good balance. Like I make sure that everything, you know, I kind of hold everything together if I could, you know? And then they can go, blah, it is you a good balance, dick, or, you know, whatever. So it's good. It's like, it, it, you know, it works well together. There's like a good medium there.
Well, Travis, uh, Travis judges whether or not a show is good by how well the performance is. Tom and I judge how uh, good a show is by how funny we think we are. Yeah. And we're never funny, so we're, we're well, still yeah, waiting for a good show. I, for, for years, it's been the same thing. You go to a Blink show because you want to be entertained. The right. songs are almost like the filler between what you guys do. Well, hopefully not that bad. Well, no, I mean, you know what I mean? It's like, obviously, I mean, the songs, your like, songs. People can't even stand your songs. They're just waiting for you to get done so they can hear you talking about wieners. No, I, I, no, I, I kind of agree with you. I think people know we've definitely made, uh, we're definitely a certain way, and people know how we are and know what our shows are like, and they, I think they come for that reason. At least the, the real fans do, and I, and I think it's different from most bands, and I think that uh, I always hated bands that just sit there and play. I love bands that can play really well, so you know we try and do both. We actually, I think we do play well. I and I and I think Travis is totally right. I think it's it's great because because he does. He is the complete backbone of the band, and with Travis playing the way he does, it gives a lot more leeway for Mark and I just to f around and uh, and play horribly bad. But we, I think we do play good though, and I think that us interacting with the audience and just doing our whole thing is just different, and I think it's original, and I like it, and it's fun. It's fun to do. Tell me about the video stuff. It seems you wanted to break rules when it came to just live shows. When you sat down, obviously mm -hmm. Eminem's video to me was pretty breakthrough as it was, even though not a lot of people got to see it. But since then, you've gone out, what, did you sit down consciously and go, this is our credo, this is what we're gonna do, and if you don't like it, what? G give me the rundown. I mean, how did this, because essentially you've done some of the most amazing videos ever. Were they in your head? Did you sit down with the director first, or how did that work? Well, when when we did the video for What's My Age Again, we went to Marcos, the director, and we said, you know, what are your ideas? And he actually went to his little nephew, who's a Blink fan, and he said, I'm doing this video for a band called Blink-182. And the nephew said, well, those guys are crazy on stage. You have to come up with something really outrageous for them to do. And uh, just he, Marcos grew up in the punk rock scene also, so he knows what our mentality is, and he knows that we're willing to do whatever to try and make a, a funny video or a good video. And so he came at us with, uh, with running through L.A. naked, which... Uh, we were kind of like, we are just, sure, I mean, it didn't seem too outrageous to us, but I guess to... We actually go, well, what's going to be rad about that, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, I mean, for you guys it seems kind of tame, but for yeah. middle America... That's what it was, I mean, it's, that's, it's, our sensibilities are definitely different from most people. I mean, running naked through L.A., well, all right, but we've done that a hundred times probably on playing shows or whatever, I mean... Uh, I can point out times where Mark would jump around naked outside the parking lot of a show and down on Sunset. Remember when he did that out of the whiskey? One time, the we, one time we played, I think... <laughs> it was think with it was, Unwritten Law. Yeah, we played the whiskey with Unwritten Law. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, it was a sold-out show. We were all excited or whatever. And this is just an indication of how, like, we used to just be naked backstage or whatever. Um, I saw their van pulling out of the parking lot. It was super late at night. The show was already over. And uh, so the van was pulling out. So I get naked in between these two cars, completely naked, and as their van's pulling up right in front of me, I jump out completely naked and I go, hey! No, 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 it was more than hey. It was pelvic thrust oh, and yeah, dick flying hey, all over the place. Hey, with like a pelvis thrust and <laughs> things were flying all over the place, and I'm standing there like, eh! And the car stops, the door opens, and the valet gets out, and he goes, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> no, so we, so we do, we always do the videos, I mean. Oh, I, yeah, the videos. <laughs> I, think, I think we have a good little, uh, but, but, but you, that, that was basically real life. You, yeah. You've done it in real life, so why not actually put it on? Well, we, and we also have, a, I think we have a, a decent meter for, for uh, you know, pointing out what's good and what's bad, you know. And I think a lot of bands also would take themselves, I mean, we don't take ourselves very seriously at all. We're willing to do whatever we could, you know, to do to get a laugh or make it funny or make it a cool video. I think a lot of bands wouldn't do the, the videos that we do just because they wouldn't think that they'd look cool in it. You know, I mean, we don't right. care about looking... Cool. We'd well, actually, the, the video where you ripped on everybody. Right. Any grief from that at all? Anybody come up to you at the MTV Music Awards sure and go, dude, that, I mean, it's, it's obviously, it's really, and if you can't make fun of yourself, and you, and... That's so, why we make fun of ourselves. If we sit right. there and talk about how bad we are, it's like it leaves nowhere else to go, you know? So it's, like, it's like what Mark always says, it's like making fun of the retarded kids, you, you know? You can't make fun of us. It's like making fun of retarded kids because, <laughs> you know, you just can't do it. It's yeah. pointless. No, we uh, we everybody I'm sure kind of got offended a little bit, but they wouldn't say it. But they were most people were cool Nobody about came it. Did you say anything? Uh, the only people that have even said anything were in sync, who were actually nice guys who came up and they said, "How come you didn't make fun of us in that video?" Any but er of, everybody else, I think, took it with a grain of salt. I mean, and we didn't even think that video was going to be that rad. I mean, that's what, how our brain works. We're like, well, yeah. this could be funny. The stuff that we really wanted to do in that wouldn't even be allowed on TV. Like to really make, I mean, like what? I don't know. We 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 would have gone way overboard, I'm sure. But uh, just just the dancing and 
Like the, the few little jokes that were in there were just our bringing to the table like the day before. Just said, why don't we do this and this, you know? That's why uh, one of these days we need to make one of those like My Michael Jackson 10 minute long videos. <laughs> you know, where there's like talking and dialogue and it's, it's just so f and you can't show it anywhere in the world. <laughs> That'd be rad. You can sell it. You never know. I know. Huh? Um, tell me about the side project stuff. You got outside interests. You got a drum mm -hmm. shop, right, Travis? You still drum shop? You got or doing drum teaching or something? What's yeah, the, yeah, I teach drums like five days a week when I'm home and stuff like that. Is that a good release for you? Um, not necessarily the release. It's just keeping me busy, like doing something productive, rather than going out with my friends and jerking off all day. I can actually like I enjoy playing and I like teaching students. You know, like right. I don't know. I'm just super into music or whatever. You get bored when you're out of the road. Now, actually, being that. on the road is like a vacation now. It's like is it? vacation is like being on a tour and at home. I have like, I run my company, this clothing company, and then I have drum lessons, and then I have my bad car hobby. I have a, a lot of bad hobbies that I got myself into that are kind of like take up a lot of time. So, what about you guys? Side project stuff. I think you were you managed, produced, put the Phoenix, uh, well, formerly River Phoenix, right? Help man I actually uh, help manage Phoenix TX. Tom and I run a website called loserkids.com. We also have fiancés and weddings to plan for and two dogs and uh it's so weird because don't you find yourself all day running around doing errands? Yeah, and then you go, what do you do with your spare time? You go, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm always doing something. The only thing that I really like to say that I do as a hobby that I absolutely love is golf. I just love golf. Did you, did you get this recently? Like seven or eight months ago, and I just am so addicted. But it's so rad because that's the only place. It's an excuse to get super drunk on a bunch of go karts, <laughs> and uh, and be out on like green grass, and it's all beautiful. And you get to make fun of all of the the stuck up pretentious golfers that are in behind and in front of you that are pissed because you're hitting balls directly into them on purpose, you know. But it's fun though. I love being out there. and I love golfing, and I skateboard when I can. Uh, but I don't get what? to do that that much. What are the things you can't do now that you that you still want to do but you can't do because, the because, I want, because I want, of movies? Yeah, the biggest thing that I want to do is go to shows, old punk rock shows. Like last night, two rad punker bands played, and I would love to go watch them play, but can because <laughs> you're not really accepted. And <laughs> I mean, seriously, are you, yeah, it sucks. I mean, you know, you, but, I understand even, why. Even though, you know, because I've seen it happen. Vetter showed up at a Jonathan Richmond show, and people were like giving him. I mean, this is. But just you know, it goes like, with the it goes with the territory. I mean. No matter if you're successful in anything, you know, whatever, and even if you want to call it success with us or not, but the point is, you know, people know who we, who we are. I bet if Kobe Bryant showed us at the punk show, he wouldn't get heckled. Because <laughs> he's like way bigger than everybody. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, I would I would love to go see shows still, but I can't, you know. I, I can't if I have a wig and a big 70s mustache or, you know, <laughs> handlebars, you know. But uh, <laughs> Maybe that's more obvious. Maybe that's like, that's the only, that. that's really probably that and just cruise, I mean, just cruising around on a weekend going to a, <laughs> just going to like a mall or like any place where there's people. I mean, I don't know. That's something you really want to do still? I just want to be normal. I'd rather just be able to cruise and go anywhere without being bugged and hassled. I mean, because you get all different types of people. You get people that are freaking because they see you, people that really like you and want an autograph, people that will stare at you that you don't know what they want, and there's people that actually just want to throw things at you. And another, and you know, it's just like this big group of you. You don't know what anybody's intention is, but they all know you and you don't know anybody and you're just there to get like a Slurpee. You know, <laughs> so it's just kind of like, all right, dude. Okay, here's a here's a worst case scenario. Right after uh, End of the State came out, I was it was super late at night. I wasn't feeling so well. Oh no, this is a rad story. <laughs> and uh, I'm all, you know, I, I I've been homesick all day, and like just no like no product in my hair. When I don't have stuff in my hair, I get like the white man's afro. It's really gnarly. So I I'm all I'm gonna go to a taco shop, and it's like one o'clock in the morning. There's no possible way that anybody will be there. And I'm listening to our CD, and I'm, I was stoked on the way it was sounding. I was listening to something, so I had it turned up really loud. So I pull into the taco shop in my pajamas, blasting our CD with the window down at 1 o'clock in the morning. And then I realized it's a Friday night. It's totally packed. There's like 30 high school kids out there. And I peel into the parking spot. All the kids turn. I'm blasting my music, and I look, and there's a bottle on the ground. My tire hits the bottle. <laughs> the air starts leaking out of my tire. And then some dude goes, hey, that's a dude from Blink-182. And so I pull out, I'm blasting my own music, I got a flat tire, I'm in my pajamas. In the very front stall. Yeah, in the very front stall of my favorite taco shop. And so I, I get out and people are just laughing at me because 
My tire's flat, I'm in my pajamas. His pajamas have rainbows and leprechauns. <laughs> Unicorns jumping over the rainbow, They're like my little pony pajamas. <laughs> my strawberry shortcake sleeping bags in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> the last time you pulled that stuff? That's the last time I pulled that stuff. That, that's honestly what sucks, is you, is you have to think about when you go out, where are you going, and who's going to be there, or whatever. Oh, routinely. I wait in the car, and my chick will buy movie tickets. And once she gets a ticket to the theater, then I'll run in. Like, and just try and get to the theater as quick as you can, and that never works either. It's bad. That's kind of bizarre. I mean, the, the last big rock star guy came out of San Diego, Eddie Vedder, has always been the, like, the whole anti-rock star thing. Yeah. Because of this, man, he still tries to go to shows, he still gets from people because he's a rock star. But you guys, because you make fun of yourself so much, it doesn't seem like you'd have that problem. Well, I think one of the, what, what, is there a... That's one of the problems, I think, is because we're just so, I think we're so approachable. I think that's what people get from us, and which is definitely a good thing. You know, the way we hold ourselves and the way we talk to kids, and we're super honest and we make fun of ourselves and we're not always trying to put on a fake persona, uh, you know, to, to trick people thinking that we're cool, you know, we'll just say whatever. And, so I, and I honestly think that's what, like you see some guy from, uh, I don't think like the, the singer from uh, Creed. I don't know. <laughs> Creed. <laughs> no, that, okay, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, but there's so many bands that, that aren't, you wouldn't walk up to Snoop, you know, and just go, what's up? You know, it's just like, or Dre, you know, or like guys that you think are like kind of gnarly. I mean, but we're just like, hey, what's up? You know, we say whatever, and I think we just, we're just more approachable, which is rad, though. I'd much rather be that way than have. But that's what, that's something that's never changed. You've always been like that, though. Always I've never seen your soma. It's like when you got done, you'd walk off the stage and talk to people, which you know, even if you were like headliner shows, you sit there and talk to people because that was just something you guys did. But yeah, we used to yeah every show we ended, we used to jump out in the crowd and it just it was just rad. We'd every single night we'd go and hang out at our t-shirt booth and sign stuff and talk to kids and see what they like and what they don't like and see what kind of boobs are out there and whatever. But uh. So when you're on the road, best places in the country to play, now that you're as, as uh, well known as you are. Where, where do you get great crowd reactions that you thought would never happen? I think happen? it's always, well... I, I like New York. I mean, there's a lot we of get crowd, I mean, kids are cool everywhere. The kids are rad in every single city in the U.S. So, I mean, that, it's just where it's fun to play, where there's other stuff to do. I think New York's cool to play because there's a lot of stuff to do there. Uh, Southern California is always our favorite place the to play. The West Coast for our type of music will always be bigger than anywhere else. But uh, but actually, some of our best shows were in Jersey. I thought on the last tour, like the New Jersey shows were amazing. Jersey shows were good. When we were starting off, Florida was always a great place to play. But Florida's um, not as good as other places. That's so weird. Like when you start out as a as a small punk rock band, like certain areas are always like the hot spots, like Florida and Southern California and and Montreal. And then all of a sudden it kind of reverses, you know, and now it's kind of like, you know, you got New York and New Jersey and not so much Florida, and then you got like Salt Lake City and Denver. Those are always fun too, those shows. We've always had great shows in Salt Lake City and Denver. Those two, they're right next to each other, you always play them in a row. I remember because kids always laugh at those shows. But Denver, I always remember Denver because it's so high up, almost always oh, passing yeah. out on stage. And last time we played there, we had oxygen tanks, we rolled out on stage. <laughs> <laughs> And, in, and uh, in between songs, we'd have to suck off the oxygen tanks. <laughs> Hold on a second. Maybe that was a crazy. <laughs> that was gnarly. There was a crazy like rock doc in Denver that came out and like was giving everybody shots and stuff. It was giving everyone like vitamin B yeah. shots, and I mean he was just offering medical advice. He's like, hey, I'll take out your spleen if you want. Yeah. All right. When you're on the road, nobody laughs at my What's in the? Uh... <laughs> I thought that was the truth. <laughs> when you're on the road, what's in? Oh, sorry, you, Travis. What's in the CD player? What's in the PlayStation? What's in the VCR? Well, there's no PlayStation. Nintendo I don't play video games. I don't. Not at all. I just feel like I'm not getting anything done if I sit there and play video games. I listen to like everything from like uh, weird like drum and bass and like trance music to like weird heavy metal like King Diamond and and then I listen to like hip hop. I mean, I listen. I, I'm I'm messed up as far as like music. I like everything. And then um, I just rent movies, like, you know, whatever. Whatever's coming out of the time? Yeah, whatever's coming out of the time, or like old, like, like anything with like De Niro or Al Pacino or, or any like, uh, like comedies too, like, like kind of like ghetto comedies, like, um, like Friday or something like that. That's always amusing for me. What about new bands you're into that you've <coughs> turned out to in the last year or so? Who's, uh, who's blowing your mind now? Um, really nobody. I don't really listen to a lot of new stuff. I really listen to like I don't really listen to like a lot of the stuff that we like play like that that style of music. I listen to like like stuff I probably shouldn't listen to. Or I don't look like I listen to, but that's like kind of like I don't know because I get so much of this because we're always around it. We always play with bands like us. I kind of like to take like 
inspiration from somewhere else mm -hmm. or like be influenced by someone else, you know? I don't know, that's just the way I am. Basically I just play on my computer. I just go online and just download like, you know, youngasianboy.com <laughs> porn. Like that, you know, and <laughs> no, seriously, I just play on my computer. Yeah, I just I just look at stuff on the internet and talk to kids and uh on yeah, a chat room or whatever. Full pearl on the chat room when you're wearing. Yeah. I go in the chat room. Guys. Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't. You on there? Yeah, and I just watch whatever movies are there. I always have uh, Caddyshack and Fletch for sure there, but we end up watching that a lot. That pretty much describes the the whole blink lifestyle, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah Fletch movie, and, yeah. and Caddyshack. But we always end up watching what like movies you never ever ever think that you'd watch in real life. You'll end up watching because you're so bored on the bus. You'd watch, I don't know, Ernest Ernest Saves New Jersey or something like that. <laughs> you know. And what about new bands that you're into? Anybody? Uh, um, anybody get turned on? To I'm into stuff? Sum Forty One. I think they're great. I'm into uh, the Ataris are awesome. Uh, who else? Sum Forty One, not SR Seventy One. There's like some. this. Okay. Some. They're a new band. Sum where, where are they from? They're from uh, Toronto, actually. And Atari's Santa Barbara band, right? Yeah, Santa uh, Atari's. What else have I got into lately? Um, I can't even think of anything right now. I, I have a lot of stuff going on in the CD player. I've been listening to old stuff. Like, I've been listening to uh, like old No Effects lately, and I guess it's not super old, but going back to like early Bad Religion and old uh, No Effects and stuff lately also. Sam, what about you? Um, well, with the video game, there's only one video game that I always play whenever I can, and that's the Tony Hawk skateboarding game. Uh, that's the best video game as far as I'm concerned ever created. I love that. I'm addicted to that. If it's ever around though, but I don't ever play video games that Better much. Better than Cubert? <laughs> Cubert. <laughs> uh, as far as movies, uh, I bring DVDs every once in a while, and I always bring like the same few. Like I'll bring like, like uh, maybe something like Pretty in Pink or um, Sixteen Candles, like early '80s John Hughes movies, or like a Thin Red Line and like the war, full war epics, Braveheart. Uh, and you know, but uh, music that I'm into right now, I'm I've been listen, listening to this punk rock band called Saves the Day. I listen to them a lot, and I listen to uh, I always have the same. I always have like a new punk band like Saves the Day. Then I always have a staple, couple staple Fugazi records, a couple staple Beastie Boys rec records like Check uh, Check Your Head, and I really like um, Hello Nasty. I always listen to those two, or Paul's Boutique. And then um, I got the new Deftones record that I've been listening to all the time. And uh, Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey is in there every once in a while when I'm sad. <laughs> Whitney. And <laughs> and I always bring like you know the old like some punk rock bands that really influenced my guitar. It's always a Descendants record, a No Effects record, and a Propagandi record, and a Screeching Weasel record. And there's and I and I and I always bring my Dr. Dre that new Chronic 2001. <laughs> Cause, you know, I just relate so much to all that stuff. <laughs> 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 and then. Um, I don't know. I I have a, I, and I always end up bringing so many CDs because I I I so I've been so much more into music this year than Remember I. Remember that one tour when you brought Enya on tour? Dude, I used to come off every single night and I'd put on Enya and I was like, I had this Enya thing going. And I was like, F it's all sail away, sail away. And all, this is rad. And for some reason, it, I really was into like I was like this new age. It's gonna. <laughs> it was so alive. funny. It was honestly so funny because we'd finish a show and Tom would run right off stage and pretty much sit right down on the bus and just try and relax, listen to some light music, you know, like Andy or something. And so you go on the bus and there'd be nobody on the bus at all. The back door to the back lounge of the bus would be closed and you open it up and Tom was sitting there by himself, totally sweaty from being on stage <laughs> with no shirt on, just listening to Enya. <laughs> and it, it lasted. <laughs> And I don't, and I just, so I got into this thing actually on that tour. I'd go back and I'd, we have these stained glass lights. We turn on like these red colors. I that. And I'd read UFO books with Enya in the background. Talk about, and maybe, you know, your UFO books are in the New Age section of the li you know, library. But um, last thing to, to, to wrap it up now that you're the stage where people know who you are, who are the people that you like going up and meeting because they could recognize who you are and like, did you with them? And what's the. Any good stories about people you've met or people that you didn't like want to meet? Like famous people? Yeah, well, I mean, well, obviously, yeah, famous people. Oh, okay. Um, actually, every, everybody that we've met has been really cool. Well, the best story, though, was when we played, um, that, what's that club in Hollywood when Duff was there? Right when we first started selling some records, Duff from Guns N' Roses with this big spiked hair, and all like, what was he wearing? Like, I don't even, like I have no idea everything. what you're talking about. He came up. He was at. What, oh what, yeah, yeah, that's right. What was the name of that show? The name of that club. The Troubadour. The Troubadour. 
And so he comes up to Mark and he's like, dude, I'm a big fan. And he's holding the shirt like a little dancing That's bunny. That's right, I totally remember that now. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, Duff and Guns N' Roses comes up like, dude, I love your band, you guys are so cool. He holds up the shirt and it's like got a dancing bunny on it. This is years ago. I mean, this is like right That's after right. they like made their last record or something. A little bit after that or whatever. And it was just so funny to us. We're all, what? So, I mean, but you find people liking your band now that you never... But we've made, we've met some amazing artists too. Like The funny thing is, like, the people that you think would, would be... Uh, would be dicks are actually like the nicest people. Not, not dicks, but like, I mean, just maybe a little attitude or whatever. I mean, like... Kid Rock is like the nicest guy in the whole world. Eminem's super cool. MC Proof is super cool. Travis went up on stage and played them the other day in LA. Who else has been really cool? Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz is super cool. Like, we were sitting at the award ceremony the other day at MTV and Buster Rhymes, like we made eye contact and the next thing you know he's, we're giving each other fists and like shaking hands and I'm just going, oh my God, like, you know what I mean? Like the people that have sold the, the most records and had the most success tend to be the ones that are more down to earth or whatever. And people that are like just starting to up and coming or whatever have like the worst attitudes, it seems like. Yeah, because once you start selling records, I think a lot of bands, I mean, you kind of go through a phase where like you start thinking, well, yeah, yeah, we are the shit, you know? And then you, once you get there, you kind of realize how lucky you are to be there. And then it's all, all these factors that all the stars align just for you to, you know, just to get to that point, then you kind of realize it's not because you're a rad band and everyone's in it for the same thing. They just want to have a career, and I don't know. Cool. What does the future hold? Anything? Uh, you you digging it so far? Keep going forever doing this? I'll, we'll do it for as long as I mean, as long as it's fun, as long as we can. We'll, we'll be doing. It. I mean, we started off playing garages in San Diego. I'm sure we'll end up playing garages in San Diego sometime. So I mean, we're very lucky to have gone through what we've gone through, and hopefully, it'll last for years and years, but we do it because we love playing music and because it's fun for us, and we'll continue to do it as long as it is so. Right, Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> for me, I just want to say, I mean, just from watching the beginning, you know, or essentially was the beginning, for at least for me, it's, it's, it's like you guys haven't changed at all. Nothing's happened, the only difference is you have records and tons of video. It's almost kind of weird because like, you look at it and go, yeah, that's the it's the same guys, you haven't changed, unless you put on an act for me right now. <laughs> A little we walk out and roll, get me my, whatever. <laughs> Give me my pate. Give me my dress. <laughs> no, the only thing that's changed for us, for real, and this is something that I'm so, that this made my day uh, last week. Um, we have these uh, phones in our house that for some reason haven't worked. They're these cordless phones that we bought. They each cost like 150 bucks or whatever, and they haven't worked since the day we bought them. And the other day I just got, I was trying to answer the phone and it didn't work. I just broke both the phones into a thousand pieces on the ground. And it felt so good to be able to do that. You know, just those little things that you wish you could do, like just break the phones that don't work or whatever and not have to worry about it. That's, that's the best thing. I love that. Uh, I love being able just to pay for sex anywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, no, yeah. It's all the same. I mean, I don't I love know. being able to just like have people killed. I know? feel, I feel... <laughs> <laughs> no, Anybody that I think them. we're all. I think we're all pretty much the same. You know, we we feel like we're the same people. I'm sure we've changed in little ways, and I'm sure there's times where people see us and go, F "They've totally changed." And and I'm sure we've all acted like assholes, uh, or you know, egotistical at some points. But we have a lot to. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> we got a lot to deal with a lot of times. But I mean, I think like 90% of what we're all about has stayed there. And uh, and the best thing about it is that uh, there's a lot of time where we don't like this band at all. I mean, it's a lot of hard work, but um. It's all about that hour that you play on stage and when you're writing the songs. Everything else is kind of like whatever, but... Um, it is. All the traveling and all like the interviews and everything, I mean, that starts to grind after a while, especially when we've been on tour. We've been on tour for like a year and a half now, basically, with, you know, a few weeks off here and there. But, I mean, all that stuff sucks and it makes you jaded and you go, you know, you start to think, this is just, you know... Yeah, but then I watched that movie, <laughs> Almost Famous, and I was like, I have it all! You yeah. know, it's all about a band getting popular, and I was like... I'm that dude. Is there, is there a good truth in that movie? Oh, so ugly? much truth. Did you see ugly first? No. No, oh, okay. That, that, I mean, that's like the opposite. Like, yeah. No, we drove by that bar in New York, but uh, no, this, uh, that movie's rad. It's, it's to the T about, even, even how it's based in the 70s, like here, here in the late 80s, you know, it's just the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. it.